Hi, I'm Aaron from Living Science Videos. When we study biology, we have a bias that we prefer to study the things that are more familiar to us, and that usually means ourselves, or at least other mammals like us. But most other life forms are not vertebrate animals or even animals at all. Most of the life on Earth is bacteria of one form or another, but they have very simple prokaryote cells. We're more interested in eukaryotes, which have much bigger and more complicated cells. When early scientists tried to classify all known life forms, they lumped them into the same groups or divided them into different categories based on compared characteristics. The most basic division is between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. It's basically two groups between bacteria and everything else. But then they figured out there's two different types of bacteria, true bacteria and archaea, which is like bacteria, but at the same time more like eukaryotes than bacteria, and, and they're super tough able to survive in extreme environments that would kill anyone else. So there's actually three basic groups, and they're all called domains, although some folks still think of all prokaryotes as in the same kingdom. Once upon a time, these early scientists thought that everything was either animal, mineral, or vegetable. So they originally divided the domain eukarya into two kingdoms, plants and animals. But then they figured out that mushrooms, yeast, mold, and fungus aren't really plants and they're more similar to each other than they are to plants, so we have a third kingdom, plantae, animalia, and fungi. Then they realized that algae isn't a plant either, neither is it a fungus. After they invented microscopes, they discovered that algae is part of a whole world of unidentified organisms, so they lumped them all together as protists, kingdom protista. Some of these, like algae, are similar to plants or fungus, and others are a lot like animals, but they're not. They're all something else. We call Protista a fourth kingdom, uh, but that can't be right because they're so diverse that scientists think that they might be several kingdoms, really. We have this simplistic idea of these four eukaryote kingdoms, but if you really get into taxonomy, it's a lot more convoluted than that. Nature seldom gives us the simple, easy answers we keep hoping for. Still, whether it is a plant, animal, fungus, or one of many varieties of what we still call protists, they all have similar cell structures and many of the same organelles. Most lessons on cellular biology will compare the two basic types of cells, being those of plants and animals. Some fungi have a cell wall, like plants do, but otherwise fungal and protist cells are considered to be animal-like. We discussed how some of these structures maintain homeostasis, and we looked at organelles that only plants have, or that only animals have, now we're going to look at organelles they have in common and see what they do. It may seem like cells are just little drops of fluid called cytoplasm, but there's a lot more to it than that. Within the cytoplasm is a cytoskeleton called that because it's the basic framework of the cell. It's a network of fibers called microfilaments, microtubules, and intermediate filaments that not only give the cell structural strength and the ability to spring back into shape when squished, but coupled with a lot of connected cells, their combined strength can support much larger structures. But this cytoskeleton can also act like a muscle, allowing the cell to move or change shape as necessary, especially when it has to divide, as it does in the process of cytokinesis. That's how cells reproduce. Inside the cell, the most obvious thing we see is the nucleus, the definitive organelle of eukaryotes. Prokaryotes don't have this. Only eukaryotes do. The nucleus is where eukaryotes keep their chromosomes of hereditary DNA. This DNA also causes the nucleus to behave a bit like a brain in that it commands the other functions of the cell. Connected to the nucleus is a network of interconnected or tubular membranes called the endoplasmic reticulum. This is the cell's main producer and it works in two divisions. The main part of it is studded with ribosomes made of a combination of protein and RNA. These are often called molecular machines because they make or synthesize other types of proteins including enzymes which also break down and build other chemical constructs. These are the sorts of things that a cell needs to produce in order to keep everything functioning. The other type of endoplasmic reticulum, or ER for short, is called the smooth ER because it's just tubular membranes with none of the studs to make it rough. It also synthesizes or makes things like glucose or steroids, but it usually secretes tiny hairpin-like phospholipid molecules that make up all of the cellular membranes. The way that enzymes and organelles make things is surprisingly simple and chemically mechanical. Enzymes, for example, have a particular shape that only certain molecules will fit into, and when one does, it's like turning a key in a lock. 
Some enzymes change shape, and in so doing, it either rips one molecule into two constituent parts or holds them together, making one new composite. And of course, they keep doing this again and again and again. Any molecules floating through the cytoplasm are constantly grabbed and smashed together or ripped apart by these enzymes, ribosomes, and organelles. The Golgi apparatus, Golgi body, or Golgi complex, does essentially the same thing. This layered membrane trades protein packages with the rough ER, combining relatively simple molecules into bigger, more complex ones, and then packaging them in membrane-bound vesicles. I say packaging because they're either distributed at that point if needed, or stored if not. But most of the organelles in a eukaryote cell have membranes keeping their chemicals separate. Another similar type of organelle are the peroxisomes, sometimes called microbodies. They resemble the ER and they make cholesterol, but they're more for generating energy than making components. They extract oxygen for use in digestive reactions. They also perform the opposite function of the Golgi complex by breaking larger molecules into smaller ones. Peroxisomes are a membrane-bound collection of enzymes that help digest fatty acids, amino acids, and alcohol. In the evolution of eukaryotes, it may be that peroxisomes were once the primary organelle working with oxygen back when there was very little of that in the atmosphere, and that this organelle was rendered somewhat redundant by the introduction of mitochondria. How mitochondria was introduced will be explained in a later video. For now, you should know that the mitochondrion is commonly referred to as the powerhouse of the cell. It does cellular respiration, the same thing as peroxisomes, but more productively. It uses oxygen to digest nutrients, breaking them down to generate molecules of ATP, the fuel that gives the cell energy. The mitochondrion also has its own DNA, which is not the same DNA as the rest of the cell. But as I said, we'll explain that in a later video. In the last video, we talked about chloroplast in plant cells, lysosomes in animal cells. Mitochondria are found in both plant and animal cells, but there is one organelle that is not found in most plant cells, but is found in animal-like cells, including protists and fungus. Centrioles are organelles found in pairs at right angles to each other. Each is a collection of cylinders in a unique 9-in-3 configuration. They're not really visible until it's time for the cell to divide. Then they become apparent and move to opposite sides of the cell. While they do, they extend their nine tendrils and connect with the chromosomes, breaking the chromosomes in half so that each centriole takes an equal share of matching chromosomes with it before the cell divides into two different cells. And while that is happening, each centriole grows a new daughter out of its side. And of course, something like this occurs with the other organelles too, again and again and again, throughout the life of these organisms.